the museums of ham. I'm sitting in the dark, watching a flamenco dancer's moves crescendo and then fall off into slow, sweeping turns. She slides her feet across the floor, clapping only intermittently now. She isn't the most beautiful woman in the world, but she's made so by her rapid fire moves and the slow fade toward the end of her performance. She's holding nothing back. The row of guitarists that lines the stage behind her is silent as the last click clacks from her shoes sound and she stands motionless after a final thrust of her chin into the air. She bows as we go crazy with applause, finally taking her seat. The silhouette of my classmate surrounds me, so does the smell of booze, but it doesn't bother me. We are in the Triangle Arts section of Madrid at a club called Patas, where the professor brought us to unwind on the first night of a three-night stay in the capital. We are in Madrid to study the works and the lives of El Greco, Velazquez, and Goya. It's a thing I've struggled with this summer. If it were up to me, I would just roam the countryside, finding and tasting the iconic foods of Spain. But the professor has other ideas. She keeps us busy with assignments. The course ends in two weeks, and I still have to write a paper on Fable by El Greco and turn in a final project that is a painting of the Guggenheim that I've been working on back in Burgos. It's not the end of the world that I don't have time to fully pursue what really interests me the most. We are, after all, staying at a nice hotel near the high-end Salamantra di district where the breakfast and the brunches are something to behold. Who knew that you could eat charcuterie for breakfast, that, could you, that you could stuff churros with bacon and exotic cheeses? The hotel is cool, but I escape every chance I get because the crowd there is a little ritzy for me. Earlier today, I toured several museums of ham, which aren't really museums, but shops, and took away a half kilo of the famed Iberico Bellota that I ate with some crusty bread on a bench while watching some protests where people marched with Palestinian flags in hand and chanted while waving homemade signs into the air. Later, I met Audrey and our usual crowd, which this time included another, another artist type from UC Santa Cruz. We rode the subway up and down the different sections of the city and went for tapas in La Latina. After, afterwards, we watched Madness overtake Plaza del Sol in the evening before we met others at the Flamenco Club. If ever there existed a many ring circus where the Spanish-speaking world converges, it is there. Mariachis, musicians, magicians, and every imaginable form of entertainment unfurls itself slowly at night as people from all over the world go from spot to spot, aiding and abetting the performances well into the morning hours. The flamenco show is over and I'm standing around outside in the narrow street. The girls are sitting on the curb outside the club waiting for our classmates to empty into the street. What do you think, Eddie? Can you dance like that? Audrey asks, looking up at me. I take a deep breath, expanding my chest, narrowing my focus towards the ground in front of me and assume the flamenco position. For you, senoritas, anything is possible, I say. The great Eduardo is here for you. His heart and his feet are yours tonight. I look at the girls one more time. My feet start to thump cheaply against the asphalt of the street. My sloppy impersonation of the dancers that we've just finished watching for the last couple hours is only a half minute long. The girls and several others in the vicinity burst into howls of approval. I think that they are laughing at my wit and my moves. What I don't realize is that one of the real flamenco dancers, a svelte 20-something-year-old with bulging biceps and long flowing hair, has been standing behind me the whole time. I turn around as he looks me over and points to my pod, paunch, telling me, keep practicing. Then the real laughter begins. You're such a dork. What would we do without you, Eddie? Audra asks, laughing. My response, I don't know. Stay lost in the subway probably stay in that horrendous hotel instead of roaming the streets. <laughs>